So I've written some code to export the parts list of this guitar to Excel, to a formatted Excel spreadsheet. Um, so let's have a look what it looks like. Effectively, click a button, a drawing is loaded, a view's placed, a big looking parts list is placed on top of that. That's exported to Excel, the drawing's closed down, and we now have our Excel sheet which is formatted. So note that my first item is being placed or my first piece of information is gonna go into cell A2 and I've got a logo in there, etc. So you can edit this to work however you'd like. This code, if we go and look at it, is very simple. What it's doing is it's checking if we're in a, an assembly file. If it's not, it exits. We're then using a little bit of code that I borrowed from Mike Deck. Um, please go and have a look at his forum post there. And effectively all this is doing is it's creating a drawing and it's placing down a view. What I'm doing is I'm writing out the file name to this template temporary file. I'm gonna use that later to rename my Excel sheet. We then place our view on our drawing sheet and then we regenerate the rules in the drawing. And the reason I do that is that'll run my rule called export. So if I open up the assembly for the, the template file, which is sitting inside a C temp, obviously that's not inside of my project. This is what the file looks like, no, no great shakes there. But if we look at the one embedded external rule, you'll see that there's some code references here. So there's some parts list placement that's come from the Inventor API sample and parts list export from Curtis Wagerspack's blog. Go and check that out. Um, and there's some Excel setup. So effectively, we've got our template for Excel, which is sitting in C temp and our save location. So where all of these are gonna get saved, I've set them to go to C temp parts list. If you do make a change, make sure that you have this forward slash in front of that path so that it does work. These are the columns I wanna export out. They have to be shown in the drawing to work. So if you put something on there that you haven't got on your template, it's gonna fail. And our start cell is A2. All right, so then we're going through, we are setting reference to a drawing, active sheet, first view, and we're then setting a reference to the sheet's border. And if the border exists, we're gonna place our parts list in the top right hand corner. And basically we're gonna go through, we're gonna save this drawing as delete me to. So you'll see inside of C temp that there's a delete me to inside of that. And that file's just gonna continually get overwritten. We're then gonna read in that bit of code or that, that file name we got earlier, and that's what we're gonna name the, the sheet. So when we do our export here, and this is um, the code from Curtis, we're gonna go through create sheet one, we're gonna fit in our columns, um, we're gonna get our directory and path, which we've set up above. And effectively, we're going to write in that file name, and then we're gonna launch the Excel document. We're also gonna close that strange drawing called delete me too. And we've got a little error trap in there just in case something goes wrong. So the setup on your end looks like this. You wanna download the zip file and you want to unblock the zip file, place the two files into C temp. So here's C temp. The two files you need is this template export parts list and parts list export.xlsx. These files here will get created and overwritten every time you run, run this. So you can basically ignore them. And a folder called parts list will be created inside of C temp. And in there, anything that you export will be placed. So really easy to do. The only other thing is you need an external rule. So copy and paste the external rule into, or copy and paste the rule from the blog post into an assembly. But ideally again, you'll run that as an external rule. And with that all set up, you just hit the button and it'll export out our parts list. It'll create that temporary file for us and it'll then fire up Excel, save that to the right location and off you go. I hope you find this useful. Um, there's a bit more information on the blog post itself. Thank you.